All right, so welcome to the channel. Um, so what we got here is my 1953 Packard Coupe uh, two-door. Um, it is a fully running driving car, or was, until yesterday as I started pulling it apart. Um, overall, it's an awesome car, uh, but it's just not that enjoyable to drive in today's standards. Um, it's got the original 327 inline flathead straight eight Packard engine with a two-speed transmission. Um, goes up and down the road pretty good, but it loves about 55 miles an hour. Anything other than that feels like you're running it pretty hard. So the plan of attack is to rip this thing out. Um, it, it car is currently bagged. Um, it's up on jack stands. I started tearing it apart a little bit yesterday. Uh, but the plan is rip this out, and then we're going to add in the 2011 Crown Vic uh, front end, which will give us disc brakes, power steering, um, aluminum front end, uh, and also we're going to go ahead and rebag this as well. So we're going to be adding that front end to this Packard here and then uh, putting in a full LS drivetrain. So stay tuned.
All right, so we finished off by removing the drivetrain. Um, and then I went on to remove the crossmember. Now, I did set up a time lapse to take that thing out, and it took way longer than I thought, so I don't want to bore you with the incredibly uh, slow process of that. I took the time to actually remove all the rivets, which, um, you know, I probably didn't need to since I was planning on cutting this out of the car anyways. But my thought is, I mean, they don't make any more of these Packards, so if somebody may be able to use this, you know, cross member in the future, I'd rather save it and not just completely mangle it uh, and instead of just cutting it all out of there quickly. Um, so I did take the extra time, which slowed me down, uh, but I think it's worth it. Um, from there, before I removed it, I actually welded across this, uh, this beam here. I didn't like this piece here was already bent up a little bit when I went to go remove the drivetrain. And so I didn't want to trust it. It's real flimsy. So I went ahead and added in a second uh, support beam across there. Um, from there, also before I removed the cross member, I went ahead and I marked my center line uh, that I then transferred over here with a, uh, uh, originally a line, and then I hit it with the uh, grinder. So that way there's no way for me to lose that, um, which will help me transfer over to the next, uh, the next piece. Uh, from there, I went over to the Crown Vic front end, and I started to uh, draw up, I drew up the center line on it, and then I welded these bars across it as well, and I decided I was going to cut the frame rails off the Crown Vic. Now, they do make some weld-in pockets for the Ford trucks that I thought about ordering or fabbing up myself, but I decided if I can use as much of this front end um, as possible, including parts of the frame rail, um, that may be uh, my best interest. So what, I, what I'm finding out here is pretty cool, is that if I set this guy up here, all right, now I also transferred my uh, center line with a uh, grinder here as well, just a real light line in order so that way I don't lose it. Um, now I do plan on fully welding this thing in, um, but where we're at is if I line up, all right, if I line up that line there, I go to the other side and line it up, all right, Overall, we're really, really close. I mean, I'm gonna end up trimming this top rail off here, but if I trim off just a little bit of the frame rail here and do you know something similar in the rear, maybe I don't even have to trim it up. Um, overall, I can make that fit down in there real nice and tight, and, uh, and then I can weld it in, and then I can then gusset it all over and, and box it all in to where it'll be nice and strong, and uh, we have the factory mounts. So, kind of a win-win in my opinion. Um, I'm actually really happy with how this thing is going to line up. I think it's going to be great. Now, the other thing I'm thinking about doing is uh, I got to take some measurements and things like that. But when I go to notch this in the frame, I may cheat this up a little bit. Uh, the cross member should actually move forward some. And we have so much room here for the drivetrain that I'm going to have to make my own engine mounts. So I don't think I'm going to get in the way. Now, if I cheat it up just slightly, I can guarantee that I'm going to lay frame, which is kind of the goal. I was about two inches away from with the factory set up with uh, airbags on it. So if I cheat it up just slightly, I should be able to lay the front end on the ground and get everything where I want it to be, uh, which is you know exactly what I'm going for here. I mean, it seems kind of pointless to do all this work and end up at the same height, if not you know higher. So definitely got to go lower. Ideally, we got this thing where it uh, lays frame. So that's where we're uh, headed next. Alrighty, so check it out. Uh, pretty quick, uh, easy cut. Uh, we're lined up perfectly with the center line, and we got that front end already down in there. Um, obviously, you know, we got to fill in some place and some things, kind of make that look better on every side. But overall, and then obviously, then once that's all done, then we can go through and trim off this section of the frame so that way the crossman will bolt right up. But overall, pretty happy, pretty excited for that. Uh, you know, fits not perfect, but that's why they make welders. 
Uh, plus, we're going to go through and gusset all that. I do know that steering is going to be a problem. Uh, I, I truly don't have a solution for that yet. Um, we'll kind of tackle that once we get there. But uh, overall, I, so far, I'm pretty pretty happy with this. So, thanks for tuning in.